With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Wednesday, May 4th, 2016. President Obama is scheduled to visit Flint today to witness the water crisis firsthand. The White House dossier reports that the president is scheduled to land in Flint at 11.50, then is expected to visit the Food Bank of Eastern Michigan, have a press briefing on the response and recovery effort by the United Command Group, have a roundtable meeting with Flint community members, and then is scheduled to deliver his marks at Flint Northwestern High School at 4 p.m. before leaving at 5. The city of Flint released a statement announcing that public meetings have been scheduled to discuss the upcoming water bill credits. The meetings are scheduled for today from 10 to 11 at the Flint City Hall Dome downtown, and then later today from 5.30 to 6.30 at the Haskell Community Center on Forest Hill Avenue. According to the statement, the credits being sent out now are statements rather than bills, and due to the amount of preparation that has gone into producing these statements, the mailing is being staggered. Flint City leaders will be at the public meetings to answer questions about the water bill credits, and the city of Flint says that additional meetings will be scheduled in the coming weeks if necessary. A House Legislative Committee approved a package of bills in an effort to rescue the Detroit public school system. Brian McVicker on MLive.com reports that the panel approved the package Tuesday that would divert $72 million per year from the state's budget for the next seven years to fund a new Detroit community school district. The approved amount is less than what the governor and Senate supported, and the existing 18 mil property tax levy would be used to pay down the old school district's half a billion dollar debt, which would free up a significant portion of money per student. Critics say that the legislation includes language that would prohibit existing union contracts at the DPS from being transferred to the proposed new community district which Representative Henry Yanez of Sterling Heights accuses of being union-busting. However, Representative Al Pashoka of Benton Harbor, chair of the House Appropriations Committee, says that he is not buying claims that funding included in the House package is inadequate, promising that teachers will be paid this summer. Teachers, on the other hand, believe that the rumors about the school system not guaranteeing educators' paychecks are true and organized a sick-out for Monday and Tuesday. Union leaders with the Detroit Federation of Teachers urged its members to return to work today, and according to the Detroit News, the union received a letter from emergency manager Stephen Rhodes assuring that checks would not be stopped June 30th for most teachers, as was previously warned. Regulators are expected to announce as early as today that at least 35 million additional airbags made by Takata will need to be fixed. The New York Times reports that the airbags can unexpectedly explode inside the cabin. The issue at hand is Takata's use of ammonium nitrate that can become unstable over time or when it is exposed to moisture. The new recall focuses on airbags that do not have a drying agent included. This new round of expected recalls was prompted by findings of three separate investigations conducted by Honda Motor Company, Takata themselves, and 10 other automakers. The NHTSA imposed a $70 million penalty that could increase to $200 million if Takata does not meet the terms of the order levied against the company. The agency has said that more than 100 million airbag inflators that use the ammonium nitrate compound may need to be recalled, and Takata has until 2019 to show that its inflators containing the drying agent are safe. And finally, biotech company BioQuark from Philadelphia has been granted permission from unnamed health watchdogs to begin experiments aimed at bringing brain-dead patients back from the proverbial dead. The biotech company will use a combination of therapies including stem cell therapy, a cocktail of peptides, as well as deploying lasers with nerve stimulation techniques to bring patients out of comas. The team likens the process of regeneration to the process by which salamanders can regrow entire limbs and expects to see results within the first two to three months. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.